you know, I woke up this morning and this song is just in my mind. A song of praise, my hallelujah belongs to you. My question today is, who deserves your praise? Who is getting your loudest hallelujah? If you know this song, just join me as we sing it, as I sing it. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve my praise. You deserve it. You deserve my praise. If you know it, join me. My hallelujah belongs to you. 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 You deserve it. You deserve my praise. You deserve it. You deserve my praise. Oh yes, my hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. All my praise, all of my praise belongs to you. All adoration, all adoration goes to you. All my praise, all of my praise belongs to you. All my praise, all of my praise belongs to you. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. You deserve it. Every praise, Lord. You deserve my praise. You deserve it. All of my praise, all honor and glory, God. You deserve all praise. You deserve it. Yes, Lord. You deserve my praise. You deserve it. You deserve my praise. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Who is getting your loudest hallelujah today? Who is getting your loudest praise? You may be a come, you may you may have accomplished something that is so great, and everybody's telling you so good. Are you taking it all and say, Well, you know, I went to school, I studied, I paid for my education and I, I expect nothing better because you know I got it I got it is it is that your response or do you say I give it all to God I give all the praise to God whatever the Lord has allowed you to accomplish whatever you've been blessed with you may be gifted or talented in an area and when you receive that compliment remember to give your hallelujah give your highest praise to God because my hallelujah belongs to God our hallelujahs how a hallelujah belongs to God. My hallelujah belongs to God. My hallelujah belongs to God. Why? Because he deserves it. God and God alone. He deserves our praise. He deserves it. He deserves our praise. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. We love you, Lord. We want to say thank you, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Your grace and mercy has brought us through. And we live in this moment because of you, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord. We want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for loving us. 
Thank you for being there. In the midnight hour, Lord, we can depend on you. When there's no one around, we can depend on you. You never get tired of us calling on you. You never get weary of us saying, Jesus. We can say Jesus at any moment. We can call in the name of Jesus. And you answer us, God. You are there, Lord. You are there, Lord. You're never too busy. You're never too tired. We can call in the name of Jesus. And he'll say, my daughter, here I am. My son, here I am. I'm here for you. I love you with an everlasting love. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not walk in fear. Do not walk in fear. Do not walk in doubt. Because I am here with you. I am here with you and I'll see you through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for always being there 24 7. We can count on you. And we bless your name, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Well, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. And we're going to praise you in the good times. We will praise you in the bad times. We will praise you when we don't know what to say. We will praise you, Lord, because you are altogether lovely. You are the great I am. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. And we worship you today. We worship you today. And we worship you because you are holy. You are our God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Oh, we honor you right now. I honor you right now. Honor you right now honor you right now just because you are god just because you are god i glorify your name glorify your name Just because you are God, just because you are God, just because you are God, just because you are God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And Lord, we put this day into your hand. We pray your perfect will be done. Whatever we say and do, we give it to you. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts, let it be acceptable in your sight. And Lord, we thank you because we would rest in you, Lord. We would not walk in fear because every situation in our lives that is not in line with your will and plan for our lives you have already taken care of it because you have spoken your word says the voice of the lord is powerful the voice of the lord is full of majesty the voice of the lord breaks the cedars yes god spoke and broke those cedar trees in lebanon and right now everything that is coming against the child of god every oppressive spirit every spirit of depression every spirit of fear every suicidal thought in the name of jesus every suicidal spirit it, you are broken your stronghold is broken from the life of God's children because God has spoken God has a plan for each of his children and they will live to fulfill that plan so we thank you father that we your children we would know that you love us unconditionally you've brought us here for a purpose and even though we may be going through some rough times in our lives, you are there with us. You will see us through and you will strengthen us. So we thank you today for your strength. And we thank you. Those situations that's coming up against us, you have already spoken to them. They are broken in the name of Jesus. And we receive the strength that you have given to us. We walk in your strength. We walk in your power. We walk in your anointing. And most of all, we walk in victory. So we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. God is good. God is good to him who sits on the throne and unto the land. Be blessings, glory, honor, and power. Thank you for joining us today. To God be all the praise. Oh, glory to God. 
my hallelujah if michelle can hear me michelle if you can help me i know you're good with those songs if you could look up that song my hallelujah belongs to you and just post it on my page sometime today that would be great i was hoping to do this morning but i didn't have the time but i just woke up with that song my hallelujah and god is saying just let your praise come up to me regardless of what's going on do not let that distract you just let your praise come up to me let your praise my hallelujah and whatever is going on we're gonna say regardless of what's going on it's not gonna change my praise it's not gonna change my hallelujah because you know what it belongs to God so only God is gonna get my hallelujah hallelujah mm, glory to God Woo! God is awesome I just love the Lord I just love the Lord and you know you know as God been encouraging us to praise him praises does so many things to us it, it, it enrich it, it enhances our lives it, it builds us up you start praising God and even if you don't feel like you push yourself and you just feel things start break breaking in your spirit frame you feel the, your body just feels revived refreshed you feel light that spirit of heaviness just has to disappear when you start praising him so I would encourage you my brothers and sisters boys and girls teens young adults just praise God every day just spend that time in praise and you you may be driving to work driving to school where are you going and you just praise God just praise him just praise him you're taking a shower you praise God whatever you just praise God sometimes I'm walking through the store and I think and sometimes you know I pray I praise the Lord quietly I remember one day just got it was so the power of God was so you know rich and I was it and I just started singing quietly to myself you know if you pass by me you could hear me but that was okay and, you know because I was just enjoying the presence of God so you were going to the supermarket you're shopping you hum that little song you just hum that little tune in your head and just praise God you know so many things God is faithful thank God if we we, we have a job thank God if we have the money we can go and do the supermarket and buy ourselves the groceries that we need and so many things that we have fresh groceries you know we could buy we have a choice we have drinking water things we take for granted you know we could go in the store pick up a bottle of drinking water water some people they did you know their places they don't have pure nice drinking water and so these are things that we take for granted and you know if you say I don't know what to say just look around you and start saying Lord I thank you thank you for the water thank you that we have hot water that we can take our showers you know and you know so many things that we take for granted each day but God is good all right greetings to all God is awesome we give him praise our children's confession today we're talking we continue to speak about factors that may um, lead to suicide and one of them is fear we are doing the word fear today and so the children's confession for today is taken from first second Timothy chapter Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 it says I'm going to read a verse and then the confession for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and the confession is God has not given me the spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind let's say that God has not given me the spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind and the confession for us adults are it's taken from Isaiah 41 10 I am not fearful terrified or dismayed my God will strengthen and uphold me with his victorious right hand but I'm gonna read it from the verse that's a confession I'm gonna read what Isaiah 41 10 says this is from the New Living Translation don't be afraid for I am with you don't be discouraged for I am your God I will strengthen you and help you I will hold you up with my victorious right hand and so our confession is I am not afraid terrified or nor dismayed for my God will strengthen up and uphold me with his victorious right hand again I am not fearful nor terrified nor dismayed for my God will strengthen and uphold me with his victorious right hand God everything God is victorious so we'll be facing situations and that brings us to what we're talking about today some people out of fear they decide to take their lives 
But it is good news. You do not have to because God is a God who specializes in every area. So what is fear? Many of us have an idea of what it is, but I always like to check the dictionary. Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Again, fear. An unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. And so sometimes we all have seasons or we go through there are things in our lives that will bring fear. Now, there are certain things that we are afraid of, like for instance, for me, hallelujah, I hate spiders. I don't like to see spiders. If I see if a spider coming to this room, I'll be all the way out there. So there's certain things that we we're afraid of, and that's okay. Or a snake, you see a snake, then you know, you know, you need to run this, you know, that's a good fear, justifiable fear. But when we speak about fear um, that would cause people to push them to push them to take their lives. Um, what type of fear? Fear of the unknown. Some individuals, adults, or even teens, they, let's say there's a situation going on their job and they may, they may have been fired or they may, the company may be closed and they don't know what to do or they, the, the company is closed, their applications out there, they have a mortgage, they have a family and, um, they're walking in fear and, and because I know when we started was it 2016 I think it was when we were praying for children that were taking their lives it started you know some of my friends and they were, it was very rampant in Pennsylvania and while we were during we were what during that week we had a preach and while we were praying I heard of two situations where two fathers in another state took their lives why because of fear they were fired they had a family and they would they it pushed them to the point where they took their lives fearful of not being able to to, to to provide for the family and so some people may say well why would they do that come on they got the jobs all day but you know we do not we cannot judge or we cannot um we do not know where that person is. Maybe before they were fired, they were already backed up in bills. And you see, when you don't know, when you don't know God, or when you don't have a relationship with God, it's not that easy to fight against these things when it comes against us. Even us as Christians, when we know God, the enemy brings things against us, but we have that support. We have God. We have the word of God we could run to, or we may have a sister or a brother in, in, in the body of Christ. We could call up and say, you know, I'm going through the situation. Pray with me. So we have that support, but there's some people who do not know God, who has no one that they think they could confide in because maybe in the past they they were um this the um betrayed or they confided in someone and they didn't and you know the person did not they they were not trustworthy they they let out what they asked them to keep as a secret and so therefore so these these two men and it really hurt my heart they had young children and they took their lives and i said well and i started thinking maybe they said well if i die the government is going to take care of them or whatever excuse we don't know but yet, but the word of God is here for us, regardless of what you're going through. Yes, this might be a dark, dismal situation, but do not, do not let it push you to take your life. Fear. So some people, because of fear of the unknown, not being able to provide, they get very nervous. And you know, the enemy lies to us. Do not... <laughs> Because many times when you are in a difficult situation, you would hear these voices telling you, mm, it ain't gonna work, and your children are gonna be this, and you're gonna be this. And so when you start hearing these tormenting voices, it's time for you to seek help. Call somebody, say, listen, ah, man, I'm going through a situation, um, help me out here, or just you know, call, get help, get help, but however, because the, the more you sit by yourself or you lock yourself away in a room, the more these, these, these thoughts or these, these, these voices are going to be tormenting you. So whenever you find yourself in a situation, especially if fear is gripping you and you begin very nervous and you begin to worry, seek, get out of the house, seek someone, call, do something. Get away from that, loan from that, um, from that atmosphere where you are by yourself. Because when you buy yourself, that's when the enemy feeds all these negative things to your mind. So that's one reason why people will take their lives. And so if we know of anyone that may be, you know, 
looking for a job they have these backed up bills and they keep saying and you keep hearing them saying I don't know what I'm gonna do man this thing is really getting to me it's really you know I can't think straight I, I don't even want to eat and my bills I got my family and, and, and I'm looking and I'm not getting any job you see you hear that frustration you start praying for that individual you start try to see Lord what in what way can I help this individual you know maybe you but you try to help them did you do this and you maybe you start helping them and looking for jobs you said we're gonna believe the Lord pray with them through but keep checking on them don't leave them by themselves because you don't want the enemy to mess with their minds and push them to do something that they you know may regret or may bring may bring hurt the rest of the family another reason why um, people walk in fear uh, I'm gonna dress that does that I'm going to the children they may be in a job and where they, everything they're doing, someone is picking on them. And so in the morning they get up, they don't even want to leave their bed. They're so fearful. And oh gosh, I don't know. Every time I do, my boss is like just after me. She's just like, or somebody in the office. And so you're walking in that fear. Fear of not, you know, not meeting the expectation of others. Or fear of being ready could Fear of being, um told that you're not doing your best so the fear of not meeting the expectations or just fear of being bullied that's the other thing someone is bullying it. fear of not having a good day because this one is always in my this lady is always in my face she's always so fearful of leaving that you don't want to leave your home you just want to stay home because the way you are is just peace and quiet what we do again the word god has not given me the spirit of fear lord this is a situation that I have to handle today. You know what it's like in my office. Lord, I want you to go ahead of me. Lord, I thank you for sending my angels. You said the angels of the Lord and comfort round about those that fear him. A thousand would fall at our side and 10,000 would not come nigh us. So Father, you see the situation that I'm facing today and I bring it to you. I need your help. You call. And if you are at a place where you don't know even how to pray, just say Jesus. Jesus. If you gotta say Jesus, and you just gotta, because there is power in the name of Jesus. If you, you just call on that name a few times and you feel things, I'm telling you, you will feel things breaking in the spirit realm. You will feel a release in your body just by calling on the name of Jesus. That's just not any name. There is power. Power in the name of Jesus. Ooh, break of a chain. Yes, break of a chain. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. So, mm, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's say that name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Right now, God, any one of your children that is fighting that spirit of fear, we call on the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Fear will bow at the name of Jesus. Fear will bow at the name of Jesus. Fear has to bow at the name of Jesus. And I thank you. For your children, our brothers and sisters, walking in victory because they will remember the word that says, God has not given me the spirit of fear. No, the enemy is not going to have me worried and, and get my blood pressure going up or get my chest start paining me and, and all that is going on. No, God has not given me the spirit of fear. But love, Lord, I thank you that I can experience your love. I know you love me in spite of what's going on. I know you love me. And I receive that, Lord. I, I, I just take a brace, take a hold of your love. And I thank you that I have a sound mind. You've not given me fear, but of love, power. I have the power of God in me. Power. I'm going to smile regardless of what the enemy is trying to do. I'm going to embrace love. And I'm going to receive God's power. And I know that I have a sound mind. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. So... The fear of um, not being able to meet expectations of others. The fear of being ridiculed. Uh, again, if there is some um, something happened in the family, someone may have passed suddenly, and that person was the main breadwinner. The other family members may start walking in fear. Well, that that died. Whatever happened, and there, there's a loss of income, and so the first thing is how are we gonna make it. Let's remember the word of God says, my God, say with me, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. To say, my God, Lord, I thank you. I'm your child. And even though my father may not be here to, to provide 
or my mom. You are my father. You are my heavenly father. And I thank you. You said in your word, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. So I thank you, God. I'm not forsaken. I will not go into poverty. I will not be begging bread because, Father, you are my daddy. You are my source. And I thank you, God. I thank you. I thank you. And if you got to walk around just confessing, just say it. I thank you. Whenever that desire, that that that, that thought of walking in fear comes to you, you start confessing the word. Start declaring, declaring the word. My God shall supply all my need. The word of God says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. And Lord, remember the word of God says, uh, the, the, the birds of the air do not toil and the lilies of the field and I provide for them how much more you my child so get these verses and, and just start confessing just start confessing start declaring we know the power of the declarations we've seen before the testimony of Michelle before the testimony of that other lady our sister that visit us declaring the word of God my testimony we declare the word and we see the power of the word of God so let's get the word on the inside of us and if we don't remember say Lord I thank you you're my source if that's all you can say lord you're my provider god you're my provider and i thank you god is my provider god is my source if that's all you remember just say it. god is my provider god is my source i thank you this bill is paid i thank you there is food in my pantry i thank you there is food in my refrigerator i thank you father my cupboard is is, is not beer but it's filled and running over you just start praising and praising hallelujah and coming to our children Sometimes they walk in fear because the family has this big expectation about them. They're in school and they may not be getting an A grade or they may not be passing. And then there's the pressure coming from home or whomever. And I will just encourage parents. Yes, we want our children to do well, but we want them to do it to do well and to be happy. We want them to do well and to, to, to um, not be stressed out. So if your child is bringing a B, and the child would say, well, I know I want it, or C, you know, I really wanted to get an A, mom. You said, sweetie, did you, you, you did your best, right, didn't you? And they said, that, let, them, let, them, let them tell you. They said, well, you know, I think I could have studied a bit more. Or, yeah, well, mom, I studied. She said, well, you did your best. That's fine. So let's thank God. Let's thank God, and we look forward in the future. We thank God it's going to be better. Do not let's push. Well, you study this. How come you come up with a C? How come you come up with it? And then the child, they may not even tell you anything, but right there, they, they have the stomach, the heart, start getting all these butterflies. They can't focus in school. So they sit in there and they hear, oh my goodness, my goodness. As I say this, I heard a story of, of um, years ago, an individual, um, their niece wrote an exam and failed. And so they came home to their child, their daughter, and said, you see, she failed, you not. And they started, they disciplined the child for, I mean, that's, it's sad. And so with him, the father, not wanting his child to fail, before she could even write her exam, he was, the way he came off on the child, it was so nerve-wracking, it was terrible. So parents, let us be careful as to what we do and the way we respond if a child does not meet our expectation. Because the moment you st start in an angry tone, you start, what? How come you get this grade? Why didn't you get a better grade? The enemy would start messing with that child's mind. Oh, mm -hmm, you know, good, you this, you that, 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 that. And then the child starts walking in fear. Even when the child is about to take the exam again, they'll be nervous. All they're hearing is this condemning, all these words, and they'll see your face. But if you say, sweetie, you know God is with you. And God, you, but the word of God says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so, you know you studied. You know you've done your best. And so, you just do your best and we're going to believe the Lord. And if, if, if you do it, if again, you know, we're going to thank the Lord to teach, to direct us to, to some extra tutoring or whatever, after school classes, whatever. But keep your, even though you're disappointed, keep your tone down. Do not. So, children, out of fear of not meeting their parents' expectations would push them to take their lives. And I've heard, my, my son was telling me, I've heard of stories of children going to college and because they failed in one subject, they committed suicide. Oh, you don't know my parents. You don't know my parents. They, I, they can't hear but this day. And, and these were children that, whose parents did not know the Lord. So even if you don't know the Lord and you're hearing my voice today, 
uh, you may yes have expectations and we will all want our children to do well but it affects them very terribly let's be um controlled our ourselves even though you said well i she got children and she got this and she got that then you know what start praying lord show me what is you know what is going on while my child is not but the main thing you encourage your child and let them know you know what you did your best that's the most important thing because you don't want your child to be going after education with this um with bitterness i gotta do it because of my parents they must do it because they want to have a love for learning and another thing to um some children may say well i don't like the subject i don't like this don't push them you just start praying lord i thank you that my daughter my son has a desire to learn lord make make it in a way that when the teacher oh, this is the prayer the lord gave me for my children when the teacher teaches you 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 interpret it in a way that when it gets to the ear of my daughter my son they would understand it we have to pray they, 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 that's our help our help is in god our help is in god so when the pressures come and whatever comes in our lives do not let our children feel pressured by us we let we as parents put the pressure on god teenager young guy you boy young lady put the pressure on god but you have to do your work you have to go to school take your notes whatever study and if you've done all of that and it's not working you say god i've done my best now i need your help but even before that, even as you're taking your notes, Holy Spirit, help me. And before you go to school, I mean, many of you may be out of school because it's summer, but just for the future, Father, Holy Spirit, go before me as I sit in this classroom, as I go in my classroom, you interpret in my ear what the teacher is saying. Make it clear to me because, again, every teacher has different forms, the way in which the styles of teaching. And some children may not be able to adapt to that style. So that's another thing too. Many times it's not the child, but sometimes it's the style of the teaching of the, of the teacher. And so you can't go wrong when you say, Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. I'm asking you to interpret what the teacher is saying in a way that my daughter, my son would understand. A young man, you could pray that same prayer, young lady. Teach me, Holy Spirit. You teach me in a way that I would understand. So do not let that push. And so again, parents, do not let's be so hard on our children that they would be fearful to come home and say, well, mom, I didn't do well today. Or dad, I didn't do well because you're going to shout and you're going to, whatever you're going to do to them. Let's not be, you know. Okay, so fear of not meeting one expectation. We talk about bullying, fear of being bullied when you go to school or to work. Uh, Fear of being ridiculed, <clears throat> fear of your appearance. Uh, mm. The Bible said we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and and it's sad that there's in the world we find some people that are very, should I say, cruel or all about themselves. They don't think about others, and they would look on some in the, on others for the for, um, for. But I'm trying to look for the right word. They, in their eyesight, they may think somebody is ugly, but nobody's ugly. We're all beautiful. God created us in his image and his likeness, fearfully, wonderfully made. So what if your nose is not straight? You're still beautiful. What if you're dark skin? You are still beautiful. God said you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And there's some students, some individuals, some children who would tease others because of their appearance. Um, I remember mentoring a child in middle school, beautiful young lady. And she would always be sad, and if she if she speaks, she would just lash out, and there was just like this anger in her. And so, you know, we there mentoring, and you meet with her, we play games, and you know, just talking, you know, whatever. And and I'm like, there is something there, Lord. What is going on? Let me show me what is going on. And one day, um, out of the blue, you know, she said, "I'm ugly. I don't like me." I'm like, "What did you just say?" I said, "Sweetie, did you look in the mirror this morning?" I said, "Why would you think that?" well i'm too dark skinned i said oh my goodness girl do you like chocolate dark chocolate mm, isn't that sweet i said who told you that i said girl i don't know where you got that from but you are so beautiful i said do you mind if i take a picture <laughs> my phone i said i just want you to look 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 at those beautiful eyes she was a beautiful young lady there was but she just thought because she was dark skinned she was ugly and i'm like the devil is i didn't tell her that because i couldn't say that in the public school and i was so mad in my spirit and i came and i said the devil is a liar and the Lord started giving me words to encourage her. I said, look at that beautiful, I mean, and so our children are going through stuff. We don't, I don't know who told her that, where it came from, but she just thought she was ugly because she was dark skinned. And so we have to just ask God to help us to just love on these individuals. And she was so angry and getting into trouble. But so we have to keep, and the other thing, parents, 
each day compliment your children. Tell them they're beautiful. Tell them, and it's not that you lie, we're all beautiful. I mean, yes, somebody may have a straight nose and you have a flat nose, so what? That doesn't make you ugly. No, God says you were fearfully and wonderfully made. And um, I taught my children when they get up in the mornings, I said, you get up, you thank the Lord, and you look in the mirror and say, Lord, I thank you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am beautiful. And you're beautiful. Build them up. It's not, you know, let them know. You give them a compliment. Oh, girl, your eyes, you got such beautiful eyes. When they dress, oh, my faithfully and wonderfully made. Look at you there. Mighty man and woman of God. Walking in God's power. Walking in God's anointing. You are intelligent. Build them up because the enemy are sending people out there. Children. Um, to, 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 to destroy their, you know, and especially if your child, if your child, if God has blessed you, well, we know God has blessed us and they may be dressing well and um, they never get in trouble in school people would pick on them because they're jealous of them the way they look the way they dress so we build them up and let them know they're fearfully and wonderfully made do not walk in fear God does not give you regardless of what happens today if someone says something about you you smile and say huh, I know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made you, you build up your child in the way that when because they are we are living in a world that's like that and these things will come against us so let's build them up at home when they leave home they should leave home happy they should leave regardless of what happens and you know what the enemy does that to us in the morning you may tell your child to get ready you run into work and the child is dragging his or her feet doing things to get you angry for you to say something to upset the child that's a trick of the enemy he wants that child to leave your house feeling angry and upset and so the enemy is going to bombard him or her all day at school or at work whatever but whatever is coming you will always tell yourself you know what i want my child i want my spouse to leave the house happy regardless if there's something that comes up that you know you got to deal with it, we're going to deal with this when we come home this evening. But I'm not going to scream at my child this morning. I'm not going to yell at my husband. I'm not going to yell at my wife. I want to, to, to them to leave with a bit from this home knowing they want to come back home. They want to come back to a house that is happy. But it takes a lot of work because a lot of stuff comes away. But with God, we can do it. So again, we don't want our children to leave home in fear. We don't want them to walk. We build them up in the word. Build them up. Give them a verse as they go into school in the morning. Give them that verse. And if every day you make this verse your confession, God has not given me the spirit of fear. Come on, sweetie. Let me hear you say it with boldness. God has not given me the spirit of fear. Look in the mirror. But of love, power, and a sound mind. I'm beautiful. I'm intelligent. I'm smart. Greater is God. And even though they may be failing in a subject, it's a who says you're not smart you are smart that little area of failure doesn't depict who you are sweetheart because you may tell them you are smart you're intelligent mom i'm not intelligent i'm not smart. oh yes you are because god has given you a mind you have the mind of christ you have to encourage them because the enemy works on their minds and then there are things that children would tell them out there that they may not have never tell you because they're embarrassed to repeat it so let's build them up so again fear pushes people the fear of being bullied, the fear of being ridiculed, the fear of disappointing others. I'm not going to meet their expectation. Or they may be in a sports team and they may not have been performed well at the last game. And some of the, 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 the teammates are kind of, you best don't mess up at this next game. So the fear of meeting the expectation of the team and you pray with your child, you're going to be fine. Build them up. So the fear of um, not meeting um, the expectations of their team, whether it's in a uh, sports team or whatever so all of these different things fear of not um, doing well in their studies to bring in home A's and all of these things fear of not being approved by the boss all these things we all go through a period of fear but when it when that spirit that that fear is trying to attack us let's remember the word of God that says God has not given me the spirit of fear Lord I thank you that you would give me your wisdom you would help me in whatever area I, I, I am lacking and if your children have a speech impediment some children are very, you know, they tease. You say, sweetie, God is faithful. You do not let that discourage you. You do your best and God will take care of it. So again, the verse for today, 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God, let's say, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And uh, Isaiah 4, 1, 10, I'm going to read it again. Don't be afraid from the New Living Translation. For I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Hallelujah. Let's say this together. I am not fearful, terrified, nor dismayed. For my God 
will strengthen and uphold me with his victorious right hand. So when you go to the whatever comes your way, say, I'm not afraid. I have God with me. Man, I got my angels working on behalf of me. So whatever come my way today, now I'm going to put it to God. God has not given me the spirit of fear. Mm. And you know, I, I just always say, I can imagine... I was always saying my daddy, I call God my daddy. My daddy looking down, our father looking down and says, there goes my girl, there goes my boy, calls her by name. I know you have what, you have it because I've released it to you. So my daughter, draw in my strength, draw in my power, draw in my love. And when you see those situations coming, you start confessing the word, you start declaring the word, the Lord is saying, hey, that goes my daughter. I know she got it. I know she knows where our power lies. I know my daughter knows where our power is coming from. And so he rejoices with you. He's there. Remember, always remember you are not alone. You may feel alone, but you are not alone. Say, greater is God who is in me than he does in the world. And I can and I will do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Mm, thank you, Father. We're going to walk in you today. We will walk in your fullness. We would not allow the enemy. We would not believe the lie of the enemy. No, we would not. Because we know, God, you have released us all your joy. Hallelujah. Your peace. Mm. We have the mind of Christ. Therefore, we have quick understanding. And we, we confess this over ourselves. We will understand every task that is given to us on the job. We will understand every task. Our children will understand whatever they're being taught. They will understand it because they have the mind of Christ. You have quick understanding. And Lord, they will perform with your help, with excellence. And so we thank you, Father. We thank you for the great things you're doing in our children's lives, for the great things you're doing in our lives, and for what you will do in our lives in the future. So today we give you praise. We say thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you for loving us. Oh, we just say thank you. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you. You are so sweet. You are so sweet. Mm, you are so sweet. We thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your joy. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, let's let's try to keep our homes, uh, keep an atmosphere of joy. The Lord says the joy of the Lord is our strength. You, have you ever noticed when you are uh, worrying about something or you're stressed out, it drains you, you feel so weak? That's why the word says the joy of the Lord is our strength. When you are joyful, it energizes you. So let's make it a habit experience to make our home a place of joy. Yes, things will come up, but we will deal with it with the word of God. We will discipline our children. Yes, we would, we would correct them, but we would still maintain that joy. When we finish disciplining our children, let's get into praise. Let's get into worship. Let's get into praise. Put on your praise music and you dance with your child. Let them know you're not angry at them. Yes, you, you're upset or you're mad at what they did, but you're not angry at them. Because God loves us regardless. Like God, we're children of God. God does not like the bad things we do, but he loves us. His love for us never changes. And so that should be as family members. That's, that's what should be our main thing. I love you regardless, but the thing that you did that was wrong or the thing you did that is against God's word, God's commands, I hate that thing, but I love you. And so let us let us always make sure that our our brothers and sisters, our, our tr friends, our, our, our children, our spouses know, I love you, but the thing you did, I hate. We don't want the enemy to think, my mama hate me, my dad hate me, my husband hate me. No, the thing they did, the wrong thing we hate because we want to be like Jesus. All right, God is good. We're going to go today. Hallelujah. We thank God that our children are free of fear. They're not walking in fear. And those whom the enemy may have been messing with their minds, we thank God that they're delivered today. We serve a miracle working God. And you may say, you don't know if this child is so faithful of everything, faithful of what people say about her, faithful of how she looks, faithful. No, we're going to keep pushing the word. Let that child confess the word. Even as adults, you may be faithful and it may have be, it may have been there for a while and so become it's just taken it's just a stronghold it's taken a real heavy grip on you god is going to break that you come to him he specializes in the impossible the miracle working god our team song hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah yes 
sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. Yes, let's sing and worship beauty of holiness. For he's a miracle working. Hey, miracle working God. Woo, miracle working God. Nothing, nothing is too difficult. He's the miracle working. Hallelujah, miracle working God. Yes, he is. Wonderful working God. He's the miracle working God. Oh, we bless your name. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit of fear has to go. Every tormenting spirit has to go. Our children would not think of taking their lives because they are walking in fear. But we thank you, Lord. We walk in peace. I walk, yes, in my receive your miracle. Hallelujah. My miracle from my supernatural. Your natural working God. Sing with me. Miracle working God. Yes, he yes. Miracle working God. Nothing is too difficult. He's the miracle working. Hallelujah. Miracle working God. Yes, he yes. Woo! Wonderful working God. He's the miracle working God. Yes, regardless of the time, you may be walking in fear. Today is a new day. It's a new beginning. So you dance on that spirit of fear. You dance on the enemy's head. Say, it's over. It's over. God has delivered me from fear. I will not walk in fear because of the power of my God. I walk in my miracle. Receive it. Woo, hallelujah. I'm a supernatural working God. Working God, I receive. Sing with me. Miracle working God, yes, yes. Miracle working God. Nothing is impossible, he's the miracle working. Hallelujah, miracle working God, yes, yes. Wonderful thing, nothing is impossible, he's the miracle working God. Oh, we bless your name, we praise you, Lord, it's my miracle. Woo, let's say it. My God specializes in the impossible. Bring your fear, all your pain, oh yes. Leave your fear at the feet of Jesus, yes. Miracle working God, nothing is too difficult, he's the miracle working God, hallelujah, miracle working God, miracle working God, nothing is impossible, he's the, hey, hallelujah, miracle working God, hey, miracle working, hallelujah, nothing, Hallelujah, miracle working God, yes, yes. Wonderful working God. Nothing's a miracle working God. Woo, we bless you, Lord. Yes, as we dance, we're dancing in that spirit of fear. We walk in the power, we walk in the anointing, we walk in love because God has not given us fear. That fear is gone. Today is a new day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's a new day. So step out there, mighty men and women of God. God's powerhouses, young men, young ladies. That spirit of fear is not going to hold you anymore. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Have every spirit of fear got to loose this young man, this young lady, this man and woman, this child. We command you to loose their minds right now in the name of Jesus and release the spirit of joy, peace, love. We just release it in the name of Jesus and we say thank you. Hallelujah. Who glory to God. God is good. God is good. So go out today. Rejoice in God. Praise him. Do not allow fear. Do not give fear. No way in your life, no way, no place. As soon as it's about to come on, you just start thinking about the good things. And as I said, if all you could say is Jesus, just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. God has not given me the spirit of fear, love, power, and a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. I am here for a purpose. I would not take my life out of fear. I would not take my life, period, because God has a plan for me, and it's great. 
And I can't wait to see what else God has to unfold in my life. It's beautiful. Be blessed. Love you guys. Have a great day. See you tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. Take care. Bye.